Red Barn Radio would like to welcome you to... Good evening and welcome to Red Barn Radio. I'm Brad Becker. This is Red Barn Radio's 18th broadcast season. And tonight is Red Barn Radio's 686th live concert performance. That's something. Tonight, Red Barn Radio presents Blakely Burger. Blakely has studied fiddle and violin for 15 years, as well as guitar and mandolin performing nationally and internationally on radio and television. She now brings her talent to the Red Barn stage. Welcome folks, Blakely Berger to Red Barn. And welcome to Red Barn Radio. Wherever in the world you're listening, welcome to the music of Kentucky. Thanks to WEKU, Red Barn Radio's official radio partner. NPR for Central and Eastern Kentucky. Listen online at WEKU.org. Red Barn Radio is supported by Visit Lex, Lexington, Kentucky's Convention and Visitors Bureau. More information on what Lexington has to offer is at visitlex.com. Lex Arts, Lexington, Kentucky's Arts Council, creating a great American city inspired by the arts. Chef Greg Scott and Broussard's Delta Kitchen, featuring authentic flavors of New Orleans and the Mississippi Delta on Main Street in historic Georgetown, Kentucky. Broussard's is on Facebook. And AccuPrint. 
providing printing, design, and fulfillment. Online at AccuPrint.us. Follow Red Barn Radio on Twitter and hopefully like us on Facebook. Here's the host of Red Barn Radio to tell us more about tonight's performers. Well, well, uh, what a treat for me and for us, Red Barn Radio, to have back with us Blakely Berger, old friend. With Blakely on stage tonight is Paul Martin, who has been with us with the Misty Mountain String Band. He's playing banjo and mando, and also Mr. Simon Muir playing guitar. Please welcome back Blakely Berger to the Red Barn stage. Uh, this next song is kind of my life philosophy. It's called, I Don't Want to Get Married. Tennessee met a pretty little gal I thought 
what you care for me Build a cute little cottage Plan a day to wed But when I asked her to marry me This is what she said I don't want to get married I just want to be free I don't love nobody And ain't nobody love me All I want is my money They don't care for me I don't want to get married I just want to be free Next tune's called a uh, Big Sciota. This is a traditional tune among uh, old time and bluegrass circles. And this is our rendition of it. Yeah, you know what they say about acoustic instrumentalists? We spend half our time tuning and the other half playing out of tune.
This is a song called Charming Betsy. I think I heard Lee Sexton play it one time. Recording. Ready? One, two, three, four. <laughs> Coming round the mountain, Jolene. If I never see you no more, do Lord remember me. Well, I went down to old Huntsville town, did not go to stay. Just got back at old Union Tide for to wear that ball and chain. And I'm going round the mountain, charming Betsy. Coming around the mountain, Jolene. If I never see you no more, do Lord remember me. gal rides in an old airship, but she's riding just the same. And I'm going around the mountain, charming Betsy. Coming around the mountain, Jolene. If I see you no more, do Lord remember me. If I never see you no more, do Lord remember me? Well, all right. Um, my name is Brad Becker, and um, I want my mommy. <laughs> I, <laughs> I just got to uh, get through uh, this, uh, this thing this evening, and you all bear with me. Uh, Blakely, um, I'm going to let you guys do most of the talking. I have so many things I want to ask and so many things I feel like talking about with you, but we'll have to do that another time. Instead, I'm just going to let you talk. Um, Blakely, um, you have uh, you were in Lexington for a long time during your high school years and during your formative musical years talk talk about that a little bit yeah so um, I was really lucky to grow up in a family that appreciated music um, there are a few here actually mm. we've always been very supportive um, and um, I also went to a performing arts school which was another um, blessing in itself so um, I have I had a lot of amazing mentors and teachers on my side and um, I had a couple of great fiddle teachers Amy and Daniel Carwile who um, are just a gift to Lexington um, they yeah, yeah yeah they're fantastic so they have classical training and then they're also award-winning fiddle players so to have both sides of um, two different genres was just amazing growing up to be exposed to that so young and have a great community around me so and so that sort of um, having Daniel and Amy um, mentoring you and teaching you, did that sort of balance out some of the other training that you were doing, for instance, at the Performing Arts School? Or are we talking about, um, are talking about SCAPA? Yeah, SCAPA, yeah. Yeah, right, yeah. Right. yeah SCAPA and Lafayette. Yeah, so um, it was, yeah, it was a great balance. Um, I went to SCAPA and we did mostly classical music and, um, but it was also a wide variety. I remember like doing improvisation in orchestra um, when I was just in fifth grade. So I mean, 
it wasn't completely just classical, but um, yeah, it was mostly classical. And then also <clears throat> um, just, yeah, having Amy and Daniel was amazing. And then the Central Kentucky Youth Orchestra um, was another formative part of the classical experience. Yeah. And I think a lot of people think that um, if you're a fiddle player and you also play classical music, like you're hurting your technique or something like that, you know? Um, but actually, I think they're very complementary of each other, and so. Yeah, technique-wise, so what is the, so how would you sort of, um, you know, describe the significant difference technique-wise when you're playing classical and when you're playing fiddle, like, for instance, with the bow grip? Right, um, I'd say the bow grip is mostly the same. Um, sometimes I loosen the bow, um, the hair on the bow a little bit when I'm playing fiddle music to dig into the string more. Um, you know, the fiddle's got strings, violin's got strings, right? right? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> How to pull that one on you guys. Um, I'm glad you pulled that one out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, some of the bowing patterns are different. And I mean, to say fiddle music is very broad, too, so there are a lot of styles of fiddle music. Um, Amy and Daniel did a lot of Texas-style fiddle playing, which has um, swing influence, so I learned that pretty young. And then um, I've also recently begun learning old-time fiddle music and bluegrass, um, because that's you know, native to Kentucky, so I felt it like is. I should honor my heritage. Um, my family has 14 generations of Kentucky in our family, so um, to be a musician or violinist or fiddle player, whatever you want to call it, and live in Kentucky, huh. I think you got to learn the, the music. So. Yeah. Yeah. Bluegrass Ambassador Blakely Berger. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Blakely, you ended up uh, choosing after high school to go to University of Louisville. How'd, yeah. that, how'd that happen? Yeah, so um, it just kind of worked out that way. I really liked one of the violin professors there who I'm currently studying with, Brittany McWilliams. She's amazing and she's very open-minded. She's, she's not a fiddle player, but she's very open-minded to the fact that I am a fiddle player and she tries to work with me on it, um, so I feel appreciative of that. And um, the Louisville community scene, has, uh, the music scene in Louisville has just taken me in, and I feel like some of my closest relationships are because of music, so. Yeah. What was, so when you decided to go to school uh, for music, um, was that sort of with the understanding that you were going to be um, maybe for the first time ever studying it full time, you know, the full-time student of music, and how did that work with you? Yeah, um, I, I've pretty much always known I wanted to study music. Um, so it's, I don't know, I've never doubted it that much, um, just because, like I said, it's not just the music I love, but the relationships that have grown out of it, and mm. I just connect with people through music, and I think that's why I've, I've always found it appealing, especially in the fiddle community, because in old time in bluegrass, um, the whole point is to connect with people, and um, so I think I've always known I wanted to study music full throttle, and I also have a minor, in, or I'm pursuing a minor in Spanish, um, so that's another passion of mine, um, so that's been a lot of fun as well. And tell me about um, your experience with Cowan Creek. Did you, did you go to Cowan Creek when you were uh, itty bitty? I actually just went uh, last week for the, or, or not last last week, last year for the first time. Oh, you did as yeah. a as a teacher or as a student? As a an assistant teacher nice. for Erin Marshall. Um, she's an amazing old time fiddle player, and um, so yeah, that's that's in Whitesburg. Paul actually goes to Cowan Creek. Um, we have a whole Louisville community that goes to Cowan Creek. Paul, every step year. up. Uh, yeah, tell tell me uh, tell folks about Cowan Creek and sort of w what it is and why it exists. Uh, it's. Yeah, it's out there in uh, eastern Kentucky, near Whitesburg. Um, they they have a lot of great teachers, a lot of um, teachers who've really grown up in the music scene in Kentucky. So like John Harrod is one mm -hmm. who knows so much about Kentucky fiddling, was around early on when they were able to record um, some of the fiddle players that were still living. So he has all kinds of knowledge and information about um, all these Kentucky fiddlers that are really important but people don't know about. Um, he teaches a fiddle class there. Um, I've taken a couple banjo classes with John Haywood. Mm -hmm. He's a great banjo player, um, knows all these Eastern Kentucky banjo styles. I've tried to figure them out, but it's 
it's it's just really amazing to see that. I've incorporated a little bit of it into my playing. Um, actually, this past year was my third year, and I took a fiddle class. And that's like I think that might be how I met you, Blakely. Yeah. I was taking the class that she was uh, TA in uh, with Aaron Marshall, so I was trying to play fiddle. Was that the first time you ever really picked up a fiddle and took yeah, a workshop? Sort of. I, I started playing like a month before, so that I wasn't a complete <laughs> newbie, but. Um, well, that always struck me as a, as a neat thing about Cowan Creek. We've been a couple times, two or three mm -hmm. times, and I always thought that was a special thing about Cowan Creek is that you can, you can go there and mm, maybe you've never danced before, square danced before, mm -hmm. maybe you've never picked up a banjo before, and you can go there and there's no shame in it there. Uh, the teachers, these, these, are some, these are some amazing, amazing skilled teachers mm -hmm who are happy to sit down with somebody picking up an instrument for the first time and turn them on to it. Oh yeah, I mean, I, there was several times where like, we'd catch, me and a couple other guys would catch John Haywood after the class, because he'd play something in class and then he wouldn't teach it to us. <laughs> and so we'd go find him afterwards and we'd be like, we want to learn that one. And so he'd show it to us. Uh, so there's a lot of things like that. A lot of teachers that are really great at leading jams. Erin, um, the woman who was teaching the class at that we, we met in, she's a great like jam leader. She makes mm. it fun for everybody. She makes it so that everybody who's participating can participate, whether you're a beginner or really advanced. It's fun, it's fun for everybody. So they've got some just huge talent. And then John Harrod is just like in and out everywhere playing cool right. tunes. And hey, so John's the encyclopedia of up. fiddle tunes. Yeah. And um, we'll always be the guy to pull out the crooked tune that, mm -hmm. you know, is technical on some level. Yeah. And people, people are always sort of amazed and enjoy John so much because of his knowledge. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's, a, he's just an amazing, amazing man and amazing to hear him tell stories. There is a real gift to leading uh, a jam. I think you sort of, you oh, know... Yeah you know pointed to it and that's keeping it fun for everybody who's there because mm -hmm. it's not like well here is the intermediate jam here's the expert jam and here's the beginning jam it's mm -hmm. like jam is jam right mm -hmm. um <clears throat> so you have the stems the berries the leaves all mm -hmm. together and uh yeah it's really cool uh that that's an, an amazing gift that mm -hmm. so many of those folks down there have yeah yeah mm -hmm. um I'd like to get back to some music. I mean, uh, we'll come back and talk a little bit more in uh, a short while, but let's get back to it with Blakely Berger and her buddies. Give them a hand. We're, st we're still figuring out a band name, so. Fiddle Banana. We thought Fiddle Banana. We've also considered the sh Slaw Shredders. I like uh, slosh. I came up with back, back street squirrels. Well, let's, um, why don't we take a vote in the house? Um, how about uh, Fiddle Banana? Uh, okay, how about Slosh Redders? Okay. Again, what was the other one? Backstreet Squirrel. Backstreet Squirrel. <laughs> well, there you go, Blakely. You're all set now. All right, give him a hand, Blakely. No, I'm not in tune for okay. that. <laughs> oh, this is called uh, Black, uh, Garfield's Blackberry Blossom. And um, this tune can be traced back to the Civil War. Um, there's a, I think it was Colonel Garfield spit on a blackberry bush. And so they called it Garfield's Blackberry Blossom because it stained the bush. So. Thank you. 
guess we're gonna do one that I wrote uh, some years back. Uh, sort of blowing the dust off of it. Uh, uh, it is a tune called Broke Right Through. We'll let Paul tune up his mandolin here, playing in a strange key for the evening. We gotta get those strings just right. <laughs> Fortunately, I have, a, have one of these, this, these capos, that make my job a lot easier. But for the folks on both sides of me, they don't have that. So it makes their job a little harder. He gets to cheat. I get to cheat. <laughs> This next one is uh, features the banjo. Banjo. We like the banjo around here. We do. Learned this one at Cowan Creek last year. Um, it's kind of a surreal experience getting to go out there because it's in the middle of the Appalachian Mountains. Just jam and play music all week um, outside. So uh, you imagine. You can imagine why we love this music, and I know a lot of you guys out there love this music too, so. But if you don't like banjos and you don't like fiddles, <laughs> don't go down. <laughs> don't go down. Or go and learn to love them. Or, yeah, go and learn to love them, yeah. Okay, one, two, three. <laughs> This 
world, baby mine. I'm going around this world, baby mine. I'm going around this world. I'm a banjo picking girl. Well, I'm going around this world, baby mine. I'm going to Tennessee, baby mine. I'm going to Tennessee, baby mine. I'm going to Tennessee. That's where I want to be. Well, I'm going to Tennessee, baby mine. This world, baby mine. I'm going around this world, baby mine. I'm going around this world. I'm a banjo picking girl. Well, I'm going around this world, baby Barn Radio is brought to you with the help of Chef Greg Scott and Broussard's Delta Kitchen featuring authentic flavors of New Orleans and the Mississippi Delta on Main Street in historic Georgetown. Broussard's is also on Facebook. Our program is also brought to you by AccuPrint, providing printing, design, and fulfillment online at AccuPrint.us. And now welcome to the second half of tonight's Red Barn Radio program. Red Barn Radio is coming to you live from the Arts Place Performance Hall here in the great city of Lexington, Kentucky. Please welcome back Blakely Berger to the Red Barn stage. All right, this is the song with the squirrel in the title that we were talking about earlier. This is the inspiration for our guess, I guess our new band name, Squirrel Hunters. We're going to bring squirrel pelts to the show, but I think we left them at home tonight.
traditional bluegrass tune if you've been around any bluegrass jams or festivals or for the last, I don't know, 50 years you probably heard this song and I've always thought it was a good one so I guess we're going to do this one tonight. It's called Dark Hollow. Jim. 
only in my own Heard you say we'd never part As I pressed you to my heart And I woke again to find myself all alone If I should wander back, back tonight, tonight Would you be waiting? Would your eyes be filled with love so tender like? Would your arms be empty dear? Would you thrill to find me here? Kenny Baker tune for you guys. It's a classic bluegrass fiddle tune. We play a lot of those. Got any Kenny Baker fans in the audience? I see one in the front row. All right, some old time music back at Red Barn Radio. Great to, great to hear it, and you guys sound wonderful. Um, hey, uh, Blakely Berger is here with us on Red Barn tonight, and she brought with, us, brought with her two friends, Paul Martin, who is playing banjo and mando, and uh, we met Paul briefly earlier. And um, the other player up here is uh, playing the guitar, and you've heard him uh, taken off on some nice lead up here at Simon Muir. M yeah. Proper pronunciation? Yeah, that's All right. perfect. Good. And um, so Blakely, Blakely told me that you're a disciple of Jeff Guernsey, and I don't know if I know who Jeff Guernsey is. You don't know who Jeff Guernsey no. is? No. Share. Uh, well, he, uh, he is a hero of mine and to many others musicians around the region. Uh, he's just a phenomenal musician, multi-instrumentalist. Um, Where's he from? He is from Henryville, Indiana. Oh. Uh, he resides in Jeffersonville, Indiana. Uh, he toured with uh, Vince Gill for years and toured oh. with uh, Steve Warner for years. Oh. Uh, he's been known <laughs> to play with all sorts of people. Um, and uh, so I studied under him for for several years and he's become a, a really good friend of mine and uh, oh, a cool. great mentor so are you from up in that area i'm from louisville yeah okay. i live in louisville yeah and how did you happen to um 
you know, find the opportunity to, to work with Jeff? Well, um, I was going to bluegrass jams, um, one in particular at the BBC in Louisville uh, every Wednesday night, and they had um, uh, a little um, newsletter from the Bluegrass Anonymous, and uh, they had a little <laughs> newsletter there, and in the back of it, he had a, he had an ad teaching lessons, and um, and I actually called him up to play fiddle, um, and uh, decided not to play fiddle and played guitar instead. <laughs> Wow. Well, uh, you can bet I will go and look him up. Oh, he's amazing. Um, I would suggest. Chances are, maybe, maybe I've probably seen him play. I mean, it's possible. He he plays with a lot of people uh, when he gets out. He he's passionate about teaching, and uh, he does he does that a lot. Um, but uh, yeah, if you can catch him out, he yeah, uh, it's, yeah, try uh, to find him. Cool, cool thing that you got to learn with him. When did you start playing guitar? I started playing, I found a guitar in the trash when I was about 11 years old. In the trash? In the trash, yeah, I was walking. Like a dumpster? Uh, no, it was like in the alley, uh, you know, they have, they have these uh, junk pickups, you know, and people throw out their couches and stuff, and, um, and I was just walking through the alley, and there was this old guitar, didn't have any strings on it, and... Uh, was it like a 1930s Martin? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, it was. Um, yeah, it was a herringbone. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, paid for my college, you know. Yeah. No, what was it? Uh, you Did, know, do you I, even I don't know? even remember. It had a it had a metal it had a metal um, saddle or tailpiece on it, and it had a floating bridge, and it was just a real. I mean, it's like a Toys you would, R Us type you, guitar. Yeah, you wouldn't pay twenty, but you wouldn't pay you wouldn't pay any money for this thing, but. But I went it got to the music started. store and got strings and thrashed around on it that night. Yeah. So. And and so, at what point in your life did you develop an interest in playing uh, traditional music, Simon? Well, you know, um, my parents didn't listen to a whole lot of music around the house. Really? Uh, yeah. And um, but once in a while, we would go on these Sunday drives, and um, and I remember catching a time or two there would be some sort of bluegrass on the on the radio and mm. my ear would catch it but it wasn't years later until I sort of discovered it and I was in and in basically into my late teens at that point um, and I had been playing on guitar just playing like little pop riffs and stuff and but once I once I discovered what you can do with bluegrass and in that genre uh, yeah it's pretty much taken over from there well it's cool it hooked you you know a lot of, a lot of younger kids uh, are kind of turned off by bluegrass by the vocals, you know. They they don't like the they don't, it's just not a vocal sound that they're familiar with, and it yeah. sounds whiny. Well, me. I mean, it wasn't around. I, I think that if I had heard it when I was young uh, and younger, I would. Uh, I think that I would have loved it even then. Oh, neat. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think more kids should love it. Yeah, it's a great music. Well, I think more kids are loving it. Yeah, uh, you know, over over time. And I have and a nine-year-old daughter, and she she's been playing mm. fiddle and and also taking some uh, some classical lessons. You know, um, piano and uh, and uh, yeah, I love to watch kids pick it up and play. It's I mean, it's uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Well, it seems like it seems like younger kids come into the fold by the experience of being part of the community. And and then um, and then the music, the, the magic of the music, sort of is is communicated through the community. At least you know that's how it was with, with my daughter, and I know with a, a lot of other younger kids, mm -hmm. they they are just so enamored with the magic of a community that's so accepting and yeah. eager to you know draw you in and have you participate in any way you want to participate. Yeah, absolutely. Which is cool. Um, and Blakely comes over to the house uh, frequently and. Um, they're about the same height, uh, <laughs> and um, but she just she absolutely so. adores Blakely, and I think um, just seeing just seeing uh, and uh, having Blakely around as a role model and playing it really uh, inspires her to play more. Mm. Um, yeah. Well, you have a tall uh, nine-year-old. I do. Yeah, <laughs> she is. She is tall. <laughs> Um, hey, uh, Blakely, uh, back back to you. Thanks, uh, Simon. Yeah, it's nice to meet you. By the way, nice yeah, to meet both of you guys. Me. Yeah, um, Blakely, you've you've gotten into um, t 
teaching, right? Yeah. And yeah. are you teaching at the, um, at the Louisville um, Folk School? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. tell us about, about that place, because I really don't know much about it. Yeah, so it's, it's been around uh, Louisville the past five years or so. Um, it's run by Dave Howard. He was in a band called 23 String Band. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, they've been here. So Dave's, he's a great community leader, just with the purest intentions of, you know, connecting people through music. Um, and so the, the objective of the folk school is, you know, to bring folk music to Louisville. And then our biggest constituency is um, adults. So we teach group oh. classes for adults. And so um, we have fiddle, mandolin, banjo, guitar. Um, and then we also have repertoire classes where, you know, you can learn um, Bill Monroe songs, or I think even right now we have like a 70s pop class. It can get, you know, we venture outside the folk realm sometimes. Um, but yeah, it's a really cool, <laughs> cool way for someone maybe who used to play an instrument and want to pick it back up to, you know, get in that group setting, which is really low pressure. Um, and yeah, just play music together so so you bring some of that again that old time sort of spirit into yeah. your classes exactly. and how many classes do you teach uh it depends on the session so we do four sessions a year right now i'm teaching four classes and then i have a few private oh. students so it's um it's really fulfilling i love teaching and like drawing people to music there's like not a feeling better than that so just to like inspire people to get into the what i'm passionate about is amazing so well, that's nice. Yeah. I, I love that. So, um, well, th yeah, that was sort of another question I was going to ask you is um, how does how does teaching sort of feed or sort of inform your playing? Um, you know, has that experience been an experience that has, um, you know, fed you, nourished you musically also? Yeah, it, certainly. Um, actually, like I was talking about earlier, um, there was a really demand, high demand for old time music um, in Louisville. People were like, oh man, we want to learn old time music. There aren't that many um, old time fiddle players here. So um, as I've been teaching an old time music class, I've just learned so much myself. Um, mm. I've been digging into a lot of old archive recordings on, um, you know, the Berea archives, um, Moorhead, Moorhead traditional yeah, music right. program. So that's been really cool um, because there are just so many great fiddle players from Kentucky. So to be able to pass those tunes on to other generations is, um, it's necessary, I think. Well, you're one of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you are. I mean, it's just, just great. I mean, it's really cool to see how, um, how your playing has um, sort of evolved over time. It was, it's so funny for me yeah. to hear you say just a few minutes ago, I'm just kind of getting into old time. And because, you know, I'm hearing you now for the first time just, you know, playing the hell out of old time. I mean, I'm hearing <laughs> a lot of old time. And, you know, in the past, I'd always heard sort of a, um, sort of a mishmash of always really great stuff, but stuff that clearly came out of Daniel and Amy, mm -hmm. you know, a little, bit of, a little bit of Celtic, a little bit of swing, yeah. a little bit of other kinds of tunes, mm -hmm. a little bluegrass. And, wow, your old time chops just sound great. Thanks. They really sound neat. And so um, do you feel like you're finding, kind of finding a home in Appalachian um, styles of playing or? Certainly. I mean, um, there's definitely a community there that I feel part of. Um, but I also, I, I like a lot of different genres too. So I don't want to just pin myself to one genre, but. Oh, I'm yeah, not trying I mean, to pin you down or anything. I love old-time music. Um, <laughs> I love bluegrass music. I love jazz music. Um, and that's the cool thing about Amy and Daniel, again, is that they just, like, showed me so much at it, such a young yeah. age. It's just hard to say, okay, I'm an old-time musician. Cause yeah, right. Or, um, well, you don't have to. You know, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, exactly. And that's nice about your training, you know, having developed all the training you have, including the classical, is that you really can, you can do it all. And you love it all. And... Um, we love you. It's really great to have you back on Red Barn. Great to see you and catch up again and yeah. um, look forward to hearing more from you. Yeah, it's nice talking to you, Brad. Yeah, you too, Blakely. Hey, right, welcome back, Blakely Berger and her buddies. <laughs> Banana fiddle. <laughs> Slosh shredders. shredders. Squirrel Banjo shredders. Grape. Banjo grape. Squirrel shredders. I never thought I'd need you, but 
but now find I'm wrong. Come on back, sweet mama, back where you belong. I've rambled over town and I find that I can't win. So come on back and pick me up again. Now if I lose, if I lose let, me lose, let me lose. I don't care, I don't care how much I lose. If I lose a hundred dollars while I'm trying to win a dime, my baby, she's got money all the time. Take your place Cause when I get into a jam They just ain't in the race So now that you're back Dear, let's take another round With you here by my side Babe, the deal just can't go down Now if I lose, if I lose Let me lose, let me lose I, don't I don't care How much I lose If I lose a hundred dollars While I'm trying to win a dime my baby, she's got money all the time. Now if I lose, if I lose let, me lose, let me lose, I don't care, I don't care how much I lose. If I lose a hundred dollars while I'm trying to win a dime, my baby, she's got money all the time. This next tune is called Greasy Coat. Squirrel Grease. There's our band name. Best one yet. Squirrel Grease, yep. What would you use Squirrel Grease for? Smoking, I don't wear no greasy coat. I don't cuss and I don't chew and I don't go with girls that do. I don't you 
I'm not going to tell you guys what greasy coat means. You're going to have to look it up. I don't know if I could say it on the nah, radio. Nah. You don't need to. Nope. You don't need to. Jeff White record this one, and uh, yeah, so we're going to try to do that here for you tonight. It's been that way since from the start. While you're away, there's another way. Stay away from me. You're breaking my heart. And the sky is blue. Sun is shining. The autumn leaves are turning brown. I loved you so, but I can't have you. Stay away from me. Get out of town. From the start, while you're away, there's another way. Stay away from me. You're breaking my heart, and the sky is blue. The sun is shining. The autumn leaves are turning brown. I loved you so, but I can't have you. Stay away from me. Making Paul work extra hard over here, back and forth, from one instrument to the other. Earning the pay. Earning the pay, yep. What are we doing? This is Boating Up Sandy. This is one I um, actually learned in that class with Aaron, but I had heard Snake Chapman do it uh, before, as well as, I think, probably a bunch of... Snake? Is that their birth name? No, I think Owen. Hmm. This is his birth name. Okay. Snake an interesting was a, choice. Snake was a was a nickname. I heard him do it, but I think it's a old old tune. Anyway, to you.
couple more songs for you guys. This one comes from a banjo player named Ross, Roscoe Holcomb. Came out of Daisy, Kentucky. We would like to thank Blakely Berger for being with us this evening. We also uh, thank our volunteers for their help with our production each week. We have a very special thanks to Nick Lazaroff for his production photography. Thanks to all of you out there listening to our webcast and watching us on Facebook and YouTube Live, and those listening to us on the Red Barn network of stations. Thanks to WEKU, Red Barn Radio's official radio partner, NPR for Central and Eastern Kentucky. Listen online at weku.org. We also thank the members of our studio audience for supporting the mission of Red Barn Radio, which strives to present, promote, and preserve the rich musical tradition of this region and share it with the world. We are coming to you live from our home here in downtown Lexington, Kentucky. Our website has updates and further information on our guests and our program, we're on the web at redbarnradio.com. Next week, Red Barn Radio welcomes, quite literally, a folk band based out of Louisville, Kentucky. They combine threads from their individual music careers as they create a quirky, lovable vibe. They are a picturesque ensemble driven by powerful lyrics and decorated with quick-witted instrumentation. That's quick, uh, quite literally, 
next week, 7 p.m. here on the Red Barn stage. But let's get back to Blakely Berger. One more from her. Welcome her back. Single girl, single girl, go spend your days in town. Single girl, single girl, go spend your days in town. Before you get married, you work till the sun goes down. And all around this world. Nice job. All right. Well, that's all of Red Barn Radio for this week from Lexington, Kentucky. You can see and hear us worldwide as we stream live on the web on Facebook and YouTube Wednesdays, every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern in North America. Our program is also available on the WEKU app. From all of us here at Red Barn Radio to all of our friends worldwide, it is our hope that you have a terrific week. Until next time, good night from all of us here at Red Barn Radio.